Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to change the name of a spot color using a pre-flight in Adobe Acrobat. So in front of me here, I have a sticker design that I did in a previous video. And you can see here, I have this little cut contour line around the outside of my design. So if I go to my output preview real quick, you can see that I've named it New Color Swatch. And if I just check it on and off, you can see that's my setup. However, this is going to be a problem if I use a program like Flexi or Onyx to do my print and cut. Specifically, if I go to the uh, Flexi website here, you can see that under their information for using another uh, design program like Illustrator, they talk about here where the color's name must be set to cut contour or perf cut contour. And that's so when you input your design here under your uh, cutting settings, this will recognize any colors that are set to that cut contour as an actual uh, cut line. So if you don't have this set to that specific naming uh, convention, then essentially when you input your design, it won't work. So if I come back in here to uh, my file in Acrobat, you can see obviously my uh, naming convention is incorrect so we need to be able to change the name of this color swatch now you can do this with Adobe Illustrator if you just open this up and change the name of your swatch to cut contour and then save it back out then it'll work just fine but let's say for the, for this example we have a whole bunch of designs together in one PDF or multiple PDFs that we're going to be using and we need to change a whole bunch of designs, let's say 20 or 30. What we can do is we can create a pre-flight that will make this change for us. So if I go into my uh, pre-flight menu here, under my single fix-ups, I'm going to go to options and to create a, create a fix-up. Now I've already created this, so I'm going to click cancel real quick. And I have one here that I've named change spot color name. And if I click edit here, I'll show you all the details. So basically my description is it's going to change the name of spot color to whatever the user inputs. So it's going to ask, hey, what color swatch do you want to change? And then what color swatch name do you want to change it to? So this is going to be under fix up category of color spaces, spot colors and inks. And this is the map spot and process color. And we're going to make these following changes here. We're going to change the source color name to matches with regex. We're going to give it a specific variable. So I do that by clicking the little um, orange triangle here and just click new variable. In this case, I've already done it here. So if I click edit, this shows me the, the, um, the variable information. It doesn't really matter what the key is. That's just basically the program's name of uh, labeling what the variable is. But this label here is what you're going to see when you do your input. So you want to give it something that will give your um, give yourself a little bit something to remember it by. So in this case, I call it source color name. So we know this is the input color. So click OK there. We're going to change the destination to map or rename. We're going to change the destination color name to another variable. Same thing, we're going to click this little uh, fly out here and click new variable. I've already done so. So I click edit here. And I've labeled it as destination color name. That way I know what destination I'm going to. I'm going to use the same color, uh, source color, because the color doesn't really matter. If I go back to the Flexi website here, you can see um, the color itself does not matter. So I can have it set as a purple color and call it blue, or I can have it be brown and call it red. It doesn't really matter. Um, but the actual name of the swatch has to be set to cut contour. So the source color here doesn't really matter, so we're just going to leave it here as use source color. Uh, unchanged for our overprint setting, we want to make sure to apply this to all vector and text objects. Obviously, this is not going to work for a raster file. Uh, all cut contour paths are going to be set as an actual path, so it's going to be a vector. And then I'm just going to leave these three items here unchecked. This would be useful 
to ignore upper and lowercase. Yeah, that way, if you accidentally kind of spell it wrong, you say new color and you use a, a lowercase n. However, I like to leave it unchecked just because if I have multiple swatches in my PDF file, I want to make sure that I grab the exact swatch name using the um, uh, correct lettering. So that's it. That's our setup there. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. And now we have our uh, new fix up right here. I'm going to go ahead and click fix. And then here is where we're going to put in our settings. So our destination color name. So this is what we want it to go to. So we want to go to cut contour. That's going to be the new name of our swatch. And then this is the source color name. So in this case, we're going to grab it here. New color swatch. New color swatch. And again, Make sure that you have everything named exactly the way it is over here. So if I had a, you know, lowercase n, it obviously wouldn't work. So I'm going to click OK. It's going to prompt me to save this. And I'll just call this uh, swatch name, uh, name fixed. I'll hit save. You can see here it'll go through. And it's did this to one object because it's only just this one path here. And then in my output preview, you can see now the name of that swatch has been changed to cut contour. So if I come over here, move that out of the way and just uncheck this, the look of the cut contour swatch here is the exact same. There's no difference to it. It's just been uh, the name itself has been changed. So now I can take this PDF file and I can drop this over to Onyx or to Flexi and it'll automatically pull that cut contour from the PDF file itself. So that's very useful, especially for those folks who are using, uh, using this with uh, uh, making stickers. Uh, you can use this for other things as well. Let's say if you had a file that had multiple names for the same uh, swatch, essentially. So if, let's say you had like a PMS-185C uh, and a PMS-185U. Uh, you could use this to merge those down into one uh specific spot plate so that you uh, you didn't have multiple plates output let's say if you're using an offset press there are other pre-flights that do that a little bit more efficiently but that's one way you could do it um, so that's it uh, I hope that somebody gets some use out of this if you have a question please leave it down in the comment section below as always I appreciate everybody watching the videos if you want to support me a little bit more please check out the link to my patreon page down below I have a free tier, I have a paid tier, I also have some uh, merch, I guess you could call it, but it's basically uh, some of the things from some of my other uh, videos, like the spine width calculator that I did in a recent video. I also have some pre-flights that I've already set up that are available for purchase, so you don't have to create them all yourself. I do plan on making some more items that are kind of pre-press related, uh, so stay tuned for that in the future. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you get use out of this, and I will catch you on the next video. Thanks.